welcome back. It's been a long time. Like three weeks. The scenery has changed. Just a little. You may. I mean, very slightly. You may hear some air conditioners <laughs> running in the background. Some wall units. And some weird shadows going on, but this is the best that we're going to get, I think. Especially in dark lighting. Yeah, exactly. There's just not, not much lighting. Anything we say about this office is not complaining. I just mm. want to be clear. No, not at all. Not I think that, that'll come through in today's video. I am so... I feel so happy here. Really? Yes. Oh, excellent. I know. How about you? Oh, yeah. 100%. Good. Yeah, really happy. Okay. I mean, it's only been a week and a half, so... You're probably not new around here, but if you are, we moved into a tiny home, basically. We sold our current, our, we sold our home, because uh, the market was just so darn hot, and our plans are to build. They're going to be put on hold for a little while, because the market is ridiculous for lumber and basically all supplies. And we're waiting on our lots to be completely, Finalized. yeah, squared away and... One of them we paid back taxes for. We have a whole video on that, but we're waiting for that one to be officially able to be built on. It's ours. We just need to make sure it's clear to build on it. So, so that takes a few months. So we picture ourselves in this office, home office, uh, at least 12 months minimum. It is an office building, a literal office building that hasn't been used for probably 10 years. It's just been sitting here vacant, storing stuff. My dad owns it. My dad owns a couple of buildings on the same piece of property, this being one of them. Runs his business out of one of them and uses the other one as like a storage facility for all of his fun toys. And this is an office building that has three smaller offices within it. So office it's, spaces. Basically it's a three bedroom, three office room right. office. And we're turning it into a fully functioning home with a fully functioning kitchen, kind of. And luckily it is uh, zoned for residential use, so we're allowed to live here per city code. So yeah, everything's great. We've put in fire, um, or smoke detectors, we've put in carbon monoxide detectors, we've made it as homey as possible, and our kids are thriving here. And we're thinking Dennis and Barb, Rachel's parents, should turn this into an Airbnb when we move out. For sure. There's really no reason not to, especially because they're building a winery literally footsteps away from here. Mm -hmm. You could walk to it. This would be a great Airbnb. I'd pay for it. Oh, for sure. 100%. Yeah, yeah. So if you are new, which I, don't, I doubt you are, we have twins that are three, and we have a 19-month-old, and our plans were to build our dream home, and that's been Brad and I's plan since we got married, yeah. or when we were dating. Mm -hmm. Like, ultimately our goal was to get to a place where we could build a home that we custom designed for us. Now that we've been living here for an entire week and a half. Oh gosh, it seems like forever. It's, it's forcing us to live more minimally, which is kind of where I've been heading the last year or so. But honestly, when you have the space, you fill it. So if you have a giant area, you're going to fill it with stuff. And so forcing us to become minimal to fit this space is sort of changing my mindset with what I want for our home. And we just had this conversation last night. <laughs> like I said it for the first time out loud. I said, I know it's only been a week and a half, but I'm really, really enjoying this. And I'm kind of rethinking what I want for our home. And he was like, I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but I kind of go back and forth because, you know... Purchasing a home is hopefully one of the best investments that you can make. And so, I mean, with that being said, as long as it's a, you know, you have a minimal mortgage monthly payment, it's really a great investment mm -hmm. most of the time. But with that being said, also, if your mortgage is down here, that just leaves you so much room for travel and retiring early. And I mean... The there's a long list of benefits, obviously, for having a a small mortgage, mm -hmm. or being debt free completely, oh, including yeah. your mortgage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that would be ideal. I mm -hmm. feel like. Yeah, I think it's this whole thing has just forced us to take a step back and try to decide what our ultimate goal is, and mm -hmm. like what is our ultimate goal. When we're at home, we spend a lot of our time and energy trying to get outside. And so it's like, why have this giant home with giant spaces 
to spend our time indoors when all of us want to be outside. So we're thinking like, what if we scale back our home and create like a, a like invest more in the outdoor space? And I'm talking scaling back square footage, not necessarily number of bedrooms or whatever. Yeah, because our current home that we're designing with the architect is going to be between 4,500 and 5,000 square foot. That's so his that's, latest plan. So that's huge. So what do you think like has been the biggest challenge of moving into this? home office honestly there hasn't been many challenges that are frustrating me really really even dishes the dishes aren't bothering me so that much we don't have a dishwasher right our sink is very small the dishes aren't bothering me that much because I'm reusing the kids plates from breakfast to lunch to dinner which I didn't used to do before if they were really dirty or visibly soiled or if there was oatmeal stuck to the bowl or whatever I would move on to the next plate or bowl now I am hand washing or rinsing plates and bowls in between each meal and so it's minimizing i say this as our sink is completely full of dishes right yeah, now but that's but like a, a that's tupperware fruit tupperware the yeah, giant fruit three tupperware fruit tupperwares over there so not a big deal um so i'm figuring out ways to minimize the dishes that we have even not using i'm hardly using the disposable plates and forks and spoons and stuff that we have compostable they are compostable and we have a compost bin now here and we're going to have a compost pile so it's not like disposable in the sense that you think of but i'm figuring out ways to like i don't know minimize the number of dishes that we have that is not i don't have any complaints about dishes it's prep space i don't have near enough i mean let me show you our counter yeah this is the counter <laughs> that's it that's all we have for counter space and obviously my one Instapot is taking up all of the counter space almost that we have. That's the sink right there. And when you don't have a stove or an oven, again, we're not complaining. This is just like the reality of the situation. When you don't have a stove or an oven, you're cooking completely with appliances like an Instapot or an air fryer. Or I, that's what I'm doing. You mm -hmm. haven't cooked a meal yet here. Mm -mm. We. <laughs> yeah. And there's not enough counter space for two appliances. So that's where it's been really challenging. There's also not enough plugins. There's only two plugins over there. So every time I use an appliance, I have to unplug our coffee pot, plug in and pot. That's been the biggest challenge. And that's been really the only challenge. Everything else has been exactly. very manageable. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say too. Like really the only challenge is the kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, and in like a smaller home, we would obviously have more space in the kitchen than we do here. Right. We're fortunate enough that in reality, we could just eat at the warehouse because there's a thick 6,000 square foot storage facility right behind us, which we're going to basically have a full kitchen in. And we have our RV. We're so, I mean, this whole situation is ideal. Right. We completely understand that. We are not roughing it whatsoever and we're not complaining well, at all and i think that's why we made the decision to sell our home is because we knew that we could definitely be happy here yes and we are yeah it's working out great it is working out great everybody's happy I i'm happier than i've been and i'm just so happy well and so are the kids yes more importantly right no offense honey not taking offense to that whatsoever um, i totally agree but yeah the the, the kids are totally thriving here I don't know if it's because maybe it's more their size. It's intimate. We're, yeah. We can't be far away from that's them. That's true. They're more on top of mommy and daddy, so that's nice. You know, in our old house, like our bedroom and bathroom was off limits to them. Like they couldn't just go in there. Mm -hmm. And in this place, every every square foot of this office is fair game. They don't, like all of it. The argument I made to building a smaller home is that... In our old house, we had 2,000 square feet, and was, 500 of it was... It was 2020, which at, is ironic, because we're high, high doctors. doctors. <laughs> After we built the the addition, the, it yeah, was 2020. Exactly. Um, but, like, 500 of it was partitioned off, and we wouldn't let the kids in there. We had a toddler lock on the door. They could not go back there, mm -hmm. and... We didn't let them in the pantry. We didn't like them to be in the pantry. We would corral them back out of the pantry. They couldn't be in the garage if we weren't in there. Yeah, not So alone. the livable square footage that we could be in with our toddlers was very similar to what we have going on here. Yeah, that's a good point. It's also forcing us to 
really crack down on toys. Yes, which is nice because they have way too many toys. Glad to hear you say that. <laughs> well, I mean, not because we've bought them. It's just kind of life on YouTube. So people just send us toys. And so the Which kids. Which we're very grateful. Well, and, fam and family, obviously. Right. Every birthday. I feel like YouTube people are family. Well, yeah. I Like our, our YouTube people that send gifts and stuff are like our extended family. Mm -hmm, that's true. So, yeah, we can just lump that into friends and family for birthdays and Christmases for three kids. Right. That exactly. adds up. Yeah, that's a lot of toys. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah. Plus, we want to get them some stuff. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they've been great. Who's been great? The kids. Oh. <laughs> oh, and our <laughs> YouTube community, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody. Everybody's just been so great. Everybody's so great. I mean, yeah, like some people said that we would hate it here and, you know, just everybody would be upset I mean not at all and really that gives us great greater motivation to just be like super happy here <laughs> to make it work <laughs> yeah so thanks for that yeah right it just goes I mean it's like the same people that are like you're never ever gonna successfully cloth diaper twins it was extra motivation to successfully cloth diaper twins and it was easy like it, it was it's not really any different it really isn't. Well, I think it, there's just a stigma around it. I think so too. Which I had. Like, I didn't think we could either, but yeah, it was easy. Yeah. Now, I was a little bit worried because, so Doug is our builder. He built the house that we used to live in that we just sold, and he's going to be our builder for our new house. However, he's getting ready to retire. So, like, he was going to take on our project just as like a... You know, because we we all like each other, respect each other, and want to work together. So that's why he was going to take on our project. But there was, like, relief in his voice when we said we were just going to wait a little while. So I was glad, glad to hear that. I know. He was very quick to follow up his relief with... He has a protege that is sort of taking over his business. Clientele. Yeah, his clientele. Not necessarily his business, but... And he went on to rave about this guy and he was involved in the building of our current or our previous home. Like he did all the trim work and stuff. So Yeah. Um, so he was very happy to pass us along <laughs> and it just sort of kind of, I don't know. That was one of the things that we would have felt bad about is the fact that we, we took it so far with Doug to say that we're definitely going to have you build our home and then to back out on that we felt a little bit bad about but he's not going to be upset about it at all right exactly and okay what are our latest ideas For smaller home like this a shed dominium yeah i mean i've been looking at plans for a shed dominium have you yeah have you found any no 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 um i've seen a couple so if you look on pinterest for shed dominium or barn dominium specifically barn dominium i really like the looks of some of those and then i've been watching <laughs> Tiny, is it Tiny House Nation? Yeah. Tiny Home Nation? Right. <laughs> On Netflix, it's so good. <laughs> and watching, I started watching it to give me ideas for the space that we have here and just to make it function a little bit better. And and then I started getting hooked on just being extremely creative on like living small in the space that you have. And the, the motivation behind these people in these episodes to do that is inspiring mm -hmm. some of them you know are working two jobs and they want to spend more time with their kids and they can't because they're tied to this giant mortgage and it just really is eye-opening if you're house poor you're going to be spending your good years of your life working to pay for a home that you don't get to hang out in preach it <laughs> it's i mean I love I love design and I love a beautiful home, but you can have a much smaller beautiful home <laughs> than yeah. I mean, what makes a beautiful home? So uh, we have, we've already purchased our appliances, and so as long as we have our appliances in our new home, mm -hmm. we know that the kitchen's going to be awesome. really functional and really cool looking. Right, and then as long as we have three or four bedrooms, we'll right. be good, and hopefully room for the RV. 
a lot of people are like, okay, wait till they're teenagers. They're gonna need their own space. Mm -hmm. Da 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 da. Yeah. I was a teenager when I went to college and shared a dorm room with my best friend Leah, and we had this this amount of space that we're sitting in right here as our entire living quarters, and we were so happy that we made it work. And you know what? Like what we're doing in here reminds me so much of dorm life. Yeah, it does feel like a dorm room. I had one armoire for my clothes and whatever food, snacks, stuff I wanted. Exactly. And I, I had creative ways to make that work in there. And yeah. I had my shower caddy and we had community bathrooms down the hall. We didn't even have a bathroom in our dorm room. Anyway, tangent of saying teenagers, of, of course they're gonna want room. They're gonna want space. They're gonna want a giant bedroom, but they don't need it. No, they don't. If we don't need it, they don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I don't know. This whole thing has been very eye-opening, I guess. And it's not that we've ever been like really high-end, hoity-toity, like we want the best of the best, the biggest house, that we want to build a mansion. Yeah, definitely we've never, not. We've never really felt that way. No. But we're backing off from even what we thought was reasonable to something really practical. Right, exactly. And perhaps the market will dictate where we go. I don't know. I guess we'll just reevaluate in a in a year. We're gonna reevaluate in a year. I don't know. We'll see. I guess. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm totally fine with that. the The thing is, the longer we stay here, like the, the more, more the more the more, more money we'll save, the more settled our kids will feel. Like the less times we move all of our stuff. Yeah, a lot of benefits. A lot of benefits. Well, you better hit that subscribe button and stick around and see what the heck we do with our lives. We would love to hear from you if you have any experience with a tiny home or building or anything like that. We're not saying we're going full-blown tiny home, by the way. Oh, heck I think no. no. I googled it and tiny home technically means, I think, less than 400 square feet. Yeah, it ha no. It has to fit on a trailer. You know what I mean? Yeah, a oh. tiny home has to be able to be moved behind a truck. Yeah, we're definitely not doing not, that. Not tiny home. No way. And this More isn't a barn, tiny home either. Barn dominium style exactly yeah, not um, tiny right more of like a hybrid space to have a trampoline and store our rv and have a fun like a basketball goal like we could have a basketball goal in our living room if we wanted to totally. how fun does that sound i know that's pretty awesome a slide from the kids rooms down yeah. stuff like really cool stuff if we just think outside the box and we do it now and and shout out to all of you guys in europe and other places where this is a very standard size for your home. I know us talking about how small the space is is strange for you because this is very much the normal. You guys must be very good at minimalism and creativity with storing things. And there's a lot to be said about that. There is. There is. It's a great quality and a great, like... Much better for the environment. That's for darn Absolutely. So. All right. Well, we'll talk to you later.